I wanted to thank Gentac and the organizers for inviting me to present this data. I'm going to be talking about a mechanism and treatment strategy for pregnancy-associated aortic dissection in connective tissue diseases. I'm going to briefly discuss our understanding of the elevated risks during pregnancy, review our understanding for the underlying mechanism of increased risk, and discuss potential treatment strategies based upon underlying mechanism. Prior research has demonstrated that elevated TGF beta and ERK activation are a final common pathway for aortic aneurysm, and that treatment strategies aimed at decreasing TGF beta and ERK, such as ARBs, are successful in syndromic presentations of thoracic aortic aneurysm. Vascular Ehlers Danlos syndrome seems to act differently. Dissections occur without preceding aneurysm. TGF beta is not consistently shown to be elevated, and no protection from ARBs or beta blockers has been seen in our mouse models. We are now trying to address particularly vulnerable and underserved patient populations using mechanistic studies and informed therapeutic hypotheses based upon our evolution of knowledge. Women with Marfan syndrome experience as much as a 15% incidence of dissection with each pregnancy, and this may be higher in other conditions such as Loewy's Dietz syndrome and vascular EDS. One paper by Golan et al. showed that looked at 350 unselected Marfan pregnancies and found that the rate of aortic dissection was about 3%. When they looked at it by size, they found that if the aorta was less than four centimeters, the rate of dissection was 1%, and if greater than four centimeters, it was 10%. Based on this and related papers, many people recommend prophylactic surgery prior to pregnancy if the root measures greater than four centimeters. Beta blockers are approved for use in pregnancy with modest improvement. ARBs are contraindicated in pregnancy due to the potential for birth defects. Another paper looking at pregnancy in Marfan women found that the risk of dissection increased fivefold with pregnancy, but that this elevated risk did not persist throughout their lifetime. They also found that the highest risk for dissection was in the third trimester or the postpartum period, the period following the birth of the baby. None of the papers systematically report whether patients were lactating. In Lowy's Dietz syndrome, the rate of dissection has been reported to be as high as 19%, as well as an observed increased risk of uterine rupture. In vascular EDS, a paper in 2000 found a 14.8% mortality, with 8.6 dying from dissection and 6.2% from uterine rupture. A follow-up paper in 2014 and analyzed a larger cohort and found a 5.3% mortality rate with 9.2% experiencing a dissection and 2.6% uterine rupture. Importantly, pregnancy did not change the overall survival for women with vascular EDS. In thinking about the mechanism for this increased risk of dissection associated with pregnancy, many people had attributed it to a hemodynamic effects, increased blood volume and blood pressure. However, the majority of dissections don't occur with labor, the time in which there is the highest hemodynamic stress, but rather in the weeks following delivery, and C-section does not decrease the risk of dissection. We therefore started to question whether there were altered cellular signaling events, and specifically whether there was a link between pregnancy and what we understand about the pathogenesis of Marfan syndrome, that it could explain this increased risk. So we asked the question, what initiates toward the end of pregnancy, is maintained after delivery, and might synergize with pathogenic events previously defined for aneurysm and dissection? Our focus quickly landed on oxytocin, which is needed to initiate uterine contraction and milk letdown. Its release peaks at the end of pregnancy and is sustained during breastfeeding. 
and its receptor is upregulated in the aorta in response to estrogen and pregnancy. And lastly, it has been shown to mediate its effects on peripheral tissues through ERK activation. Using an exaggerated mouse model of Marfan syndrome, we observed 91% death from aortic dissection within three weeks of delivery, shown in blue. Removing the pups at birth and therefore preventing lactation-induced oxytocin release resulted in protection from postpartum aortic dissection with the death rate falling from 91% to 26%, shown in red. We then treated with an oxytocin receptor antagonist via a continuous in subcutaneous infusion starting at the beginning of the second trimester and um, treating through the postpartum, one month postpartum period. And we found that this oxytocin antagonist provided full protection from aortic dissection with the death from dissection falling to 6.7% shown in red. Analysis of aortic lysates by Western blot revealed that the predisposition for pregnancy associated aortic dissection was proportional to ERK activation. We therefore treated our mice with trametinib, an ERK inhibitor, and found that it decreased death from aortic dissection to 15%, shown in gray. However, trametinib is teratogenic. So we therefore asked, are there similar treatment options that are approved for use in pregnancy? Given the understanding that oxytocin activates ERK by activating the PLC IP3 PKC pathway, we treated with hydralazine, which was previously shown to decrease aneurysm, aneurysm growth in Marfan syndrome via that path, same pathway. And we found that the death from aortic dissection was 5% as compared to that observed with propranolol treatment, which was 43%. We then looked at our vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome mouse model, which shows significant lethality with pregnancy as well and the death from aortic dissection is exclusively in the postpartum period, where 58% of the mice die from aortic dissection, shown in red, compared to only 5% of female age-matched, never pregnant vascular EDS controls. We found that there was profound protection from postpartum aortic dissection again, by preventing lactation and lactation-induced oxytocin release. Treatment with an oxytocin receptor antagonist also rescued the pregnancy-associated aortic rupture. We therefore treated with trametinib and found it too resulted in significant protection with only 5% dying from aortic dissection. And lastly, we treated with hydralazine, which also resulted in near complete rescue of death from aortic dissection with 95% surviving in lactating mice that were treated as compared to 45% in untreated lactating mice. Analysis of ERK-1-2 signaling in aortic lysates by immunoblotting and by analysis of expression of ERK target genes such as FOS and EGR1 show that the activation of this ERK pathway is increased in the aortas of never pregnant mice as compared to wild type and treated mice. So in summary, there are many treatment options that have been found to be effective. However, ARBs and, uh, are teratogenic and therefore can't be used during pregnancy. Beta blockers are somewhat effective in Marfan syndrome, but not effective in the vascular EDS mouse model. Calcium channel blockers, while approved for use in pregnancy, potentially exacerbate aneurysms in Marfan syndrome. 
ERK inhibitors are effective in slowing growth of aneurysm and death from dissection, but are teratogenic. Oxytocin antagonists are very promising, and many are being developed for the treatment of preterm labor. However, more work needs to be done. And hydralazine is also promising. It's been approved for use in pregnancy for many years, but its benefit has only been studied in mouse models. Thank you.